Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Lazy Girl World, and I'm back with another video and with a drink. I don't have a mic today, just a drink. Mm, delicious. Okay, so watch episode two of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And let me tell you, this was so much better than episode one. I'm talking about episode one had me like, what in the world is going on? Why do I care? We already got to know these two. I actually didn't need any more story on them. Not a single other piece of information about them. I didn't want to see or hear any more talking. I didn't want any more therapy sessions. I don't care about him and his boat, okay? But, so this one, it gave me a lot more of what I wanted, okay? Action, punching people, falcon wings, and a robot arm, okay? Got all of it. I got all of it. So, this is how the episode starts, okay? From the last episode, we, like I said, there was a, a person donning the mantle of an, of an old superhero, but he's taking on the name. Obviously, that person is Captain America because the Falcon gave up the shield to, I guess, the government? They don't really talk about that. But the Falcon gave up the shield to the people because he's like, oh, you know, I don't want to be the Captain America. Nobody should be Captain America. Captain America was an amazing man. Nobody can live up to him. But the government was like, somebody's about to live up to him. So we we meet um, John Walker. And that's literally how it starts off. John Walker, like, in the, I guess he's at a school. So he's in the school locker room, you know, preparing himself, looking at his old locker, trying to get his speech together. Or oh, Captain America. Hello, America. This is Captain America. Hello, hello. So he's in there doing that. So he had, like, his wife or his girlfriend. They didn't really give her a title. She came in there, tried to give him, like, a little pep talk. And then his friend Haskins came in, you know. And was, we didn't get to see the pep talk. We just see them. We just see Captain America, like, having his interview in front of, what well, I can only assume it's a college, honestly. So, you know, he's like, oh, still, hello, I'm Captain America. So, um, you know, he's trying to be super humble, and the lady interviewing him is like, ho, 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 hold on, you're quite an amazing man. You've done a lot, okay? You were top of your class. Obviously, he was in, on football. He was doing a lot of stuff. So he prepared, studied well. Obviously, he had nothing... He had no interactions with Captain America himself, though. Like, he, he didn't know him at all. He just followed him like all people do with superheroes. If superheroes are real, I'd probably be following some, too. And obviously, as this interview is going on, people are watching it on TV around the world because that was the end of the episode, of the first episode. We're seeing it now. So, people following, following the episode, we see Sam watching it. We see Bucky watching it. And Bucky's obviously mad as all get out because he's like i cannot believe you just gave them that man shield and then they put this dude in it we don't even know who the dude is okay i mean he's i mean we know who he is but he also is nobody he is nobody special as far as i know he's not a superpower human being he's not captain so you know it is what it is and that's it like i said captain uh bucky Ends up going up to Sam. He's like, why did you get rid of this shield? And, you know, and Sam's like, you know, I didn't want to fill the shoes. Didn't feel like anybody else should be able to fill the shoes. He thought some, they were just going to keep it up to be looked at by, I guess, millions of people. And then he goes and he tells Bucky, he's like, look, I'm handling my B.I. anyway. Like, I'm out there. I'm getting it. Even though I feel like he still don't want to be the Falcon. He's he's like tiptoeing into being the Falcon. He's tiptoeing, okay? And so he he's like, you know looking into this thing in Munich, trying to see if it's part of the big three. And Bucky's like, the big three? He's like, yeah, you know, aliens, androids, wizards. And Bucky's like, wizards aren't real. He's like, nah, Dr. Strange, he's a sorcerer. Sorcerers are just wizards without a hat. <laughs> okay, sorcerers are just wizards without a hat. That was Sam's point. And I was like, let's be honest, that is a really good point, okay? It's just the hat. It's the stupid hat. That's the difference between Gandalf and Dumbledore and Dr. Strange. It's a hat. That's it. <laughs> So, you know, he's like, I, I got I got some B.I. to handle, so please get out of my way. And Bucky's like, I'm coming with you. So Bucky's on the plane, and they, I guess, traveled to Munich? Like, went all the way to Europe. Okay, you know, fine, whatever. Um, and they end up, like, tracking these people in these crates to a warehouse. They're looking at it, you know. They make reference to when, when, <laughs> they make reference to when Bucky was in Wakanda he's like oh you, you you all stealthy now what are you white panther he was like oh, actually it's 
lone wolf or <laughs> I don't think it was lone wolf like wolf walker it was wolf something white wolf but you know they made reference and I like when a tv show gives us some easter eggs or makes references to something that's happened in other tv shows or other movies even though I'm super mad they didn't really do that as much with agents of shield I feel like that was a wasted opportunity but I digress okay but anyway so he sneaks up there and he's seeing them like moving all these boxes into the truck and he's like I see two people I think we can take them Sam's like you see two actually there's five turns out there was eight and the only reason they go after the truck is because they're like oh no there's a hostage in there she's literally just sitting in the truck you know with her her knees up to her chest y'all didn't know I could get my leg up there did you <laughs> so <laughs> anyway she's sitting in there so they go after the truck um Bucky goes in there he's like it's just food and meds and supplies um, but the girl comes out of nowhere to own some. He was like, I got the hostage. And she was like, bam, ain't no hostage here. Okay. I'm not, I'm no one's hostage. You're my hostage. Knocks him out the back of the truck. <laughs> and now they're fighting super powered people. So then out of nowhere, Captain America comes with his little shield or, you know, the fake Captain America. Cause he's not my Captain America. So fake Captain America, bang, bang, hits people with shield. And then his little buddy comes rappelling down out of a helicopter. And he's like, no, nobody cares about you and your helicopter stuff. But anyway, they're down there fighting, which, I mean, honestly, his little, his sidekick couldn't really do much. He's a re regular human being with just tactical gear on. So whatever. So they end up fighting and obviously they lose. Everyone loses. All the superheroes lose, I should say. And the bad guys get away. Um, the bad guy. After they all lose, then Bucky and Sam are walking. Um, you know, Captain America and his people pull up on them in their little getaway car. <laughs> it was like a Humvee, I guess. But anyway, they're like, hey, hop in. And anyway, they end up hopping in. And Sam's like, okay, so you guys are here. What information do you have so we can know where they're going? And they're like, we don't know where they're going. We hacked Red Wing. And he's like, you hacked my stuff? And I'm like, first of all, you hacked his stuff. Second of all, you have no information. You're just following on the coattails of me. You didn't even really know anything was going down to begin with. You suck as Captain America. You are trash. Absolutely trash. But anyway, um, you know, they're still talking. Obviously, he's upset because they hacked Red Wing, you know, his little flyer jet situation. And um, I'm upset because they hacked Red Wing and they have no real intel. Captain America, a.k.a. John Walker, goes on this whole little speech and he's like, you know, it would be great if I had Captain America's sidekick on my team. And he's like, if you hadn't said that last sentence, I would have I been with you. But you said that last thing, I'm getting out of this car, I'm walking with Bucky, we about to do what we want to do. So, skips time, we end up back in America. And Bucky's like, okay, I have somebody we need to talk to because of this whole super powered people situation like this eight super powered people running around we don't understand why we need to figure out what's going on let's see if the person i know has any information so this part made me angry um because that's just how history works so i'm not gonna get into it because that's not the kind of person i am and that's not the kind of page this is but um they go and Bucky knocks on the door and obviously they're in like a, a black neighborhood, I guess. Um, cause this kid like, Hey, there's the black Falcon. And he's like, the name's just Falcon kid. And he's like, mm, but my dad calls you black Falcon. <laughs> and he's like, does he call me black Falcon because I'm black and I'm the Falcon? And he's like, yeah. He's like, okay, well what if I called you black kid? And he's like, oh, man, whatever. So <laughs> anyway, uh, they walk away. Bucky knocks on the door. He's like, yo, let me speak to Isaiah. Um, the young boy's like, there is no Isaiah here, so you can get to stepping off my porch. And the he's like, look, just tell him that it's the person from, he says, like some Vietnamese name, I believe. I believe it was Vietnamese uh, just because of the war that he talked about. Um, so we go in there and we see this old man and he's like, oh, I was wondering if it was you. I was trying to see if you had your arm back. Or if you're coming to kill me and you're like, they know each other. And also, how did he get his arm? No one knows. 
Um, it turns out that um, Isaiah actually well, is a superpowered black a black superpowered person. Okay, just like Captain America, but they kept him hidden from the rest of the world. Um, so he he beat up Bucky, beat him down, took half his arm, and then to thank him, they put him in jail for thirty years and ran tests on him, both I'm assuming the U.S. government and also Hydra. Or maybe it was S.H.I.E.L.D. and Hydra, but I'm assuming it was the government and Hydra, just because, you know, Marvel, whatever. So Bucky goes in there and he asks him, like, okay, do you know anything about this? He's like, get out of my house, you murderer. And Bucky's like, I'm not a killer anymore. And he's like, oh, once a killer, always a killer. Get your life together. And obviously, you know, you can see the hurt in Bucky's face. Because he's like, but I don't want... I don't want to be the super soldier anymore. I'm not them. Um, but he, Isaiah told him he was still a killer. So he's still upset about that. Then Isaiah tells him to get the heck out of his house. Because it is his house and he can kick out who, whomever he so chooses. So they get out the house. Okay. They gotta go. <laughs> and I would have done the same. First of all, you don't get to ask me any questions. Because A, I had to fight you years and years ago. Here you are looking young as a mug. I'm gray in the face to your people and my people tested on me for 30 years and you didn't come save me you knew I was alive you did not help me get the heck out of my house and three just on GP get it get the heck out of my house <laughs> get out of my house I do not want you here <laughs> so they got out the house and then Sam and Bucky are like um, Sam and Bucky are in the middle of the street talking loud cops roll up on them. they're like calm down sam's like i am calm and i was like mm, technically he is a little calm and bucky's like do you know who he is bucky gets arrested <laughs> okay because he missed his court appointed therapy session so fast forward we're in the uh, we're in the jail um and then he gets out of jail he gets released and sam thinks this is therapist because his therapist pulls up and his therapist is like no actually it's captain america Captain America's like, look, uh, Bucky's probably, you know, he's not going to be able to stick to the strict court-appointed therapy session, weekly scheduled visit situation, because I need him for this, this, and this. And, um, obviously the therapist's not happy about that, because she's like, this man needs therapy. Don't we all? Okay. And before he goes anywhere with anybody... He's about to have a therapy session with me. And she's like, come on, Sam. And he's like, oh, no, I'm okay. And she's like, it wasn't an option. So she gets him in there and she tries to do like, oh, you know, let's do the miracle thing. And it's like, if a miracle happened, what would be the thing that you wanted? <laughs> it was, their answers were rude. Okay. So then she's like, okay, let's do some, let's do some soul gazing. And so they turn to face each other, get their legs, <laughs> leg locked essentially. Okay. And. And instead of soul gazing, they ended up having a staring contest. Staring contest, okay? <laughs> and obviously she's like, you guys are childish, made them blink, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, therapy session didn't end that great. So I was like, look, let's squash this until we are done with what we need to do. Then I'll leave your life. You can leave my life. We never talk to each other again. Sam's like, and Bucky's like, fine by me. And so it is what it is in that situation. So they lead each other along. But when they get out of the jail, Captain America and his, and his sidekick Battlestar, I should say, beat the horn. They go over there and he's like, we need to work together on this. And essentially told them, we have no intel. And it was like, well, work together how if you don't have any information to give me? You cannot help me. I would be helping you. Okay. And Sam breaks it down and he's like, look, you guys have rules and regulations that you have to go through. We don't have that, okay? You'd be bogging us down. And Captain America's like, fine, do what you want, but stay the heck out of my way. Because if you are there, I will run you down. And I was like, but you don't have any information, so you can't. You stay You stay out of my way, okay? I got the information. You stay out of my way. Because if I see you, I'm going to run you down. Captain America, you get out, okay? Just get out. Um, And so... They walk away. We cut to the red hand group. That's all I can, the red hand group, okay, with the, with the mask. The powered people masked group, um, we see them 
we see that they have some allies. Okay, you, we see the little red handprint everywhere. That there are people willing to help them, bring them in, feed them, clothe them, give them some place to sleep. And we see that they also now have a plane and are trying to go off somewhere. So they're loading their supplies and they're probably taking it to like a small village, refugee village, wherever they were that popped up after the blip. And um, they're like, oh man, you know, I guess the people that they stole the stuff from was coming to steal it back. Like, no, 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 you don't get to steal all of our supplies and then just take off in, you know, in the middle of the night. Like it's yours and but they were like yes we will and so one of the superpower people decide he's going to buy them some time and it was the worst buying time situation i would ever seen he was like let me knock down a, a, a pole okay fine you got the cars to stop and then he just runs at them what was why did we not have a better plan could you not throw the car throw the pole at them you did not have a gun because they had guns and they shot him up okay they killed that man um but he did help his friends get away okay that was the point he helped them get away and then we cut to bucky and sam and bucky and sam are talking and he's like look isaiah said your people were testing me poking me priding me and sam's like mm, he didn't mean it like that and bucky's like no that's not what i meant i meant hydra and i got a kick out of that <laughs> like <laughs> god such a kick out of that so they decided that they have to go and see zemo sam's reluctant but it has to be done and that was the end of the episode and look okay episode one gave me absolutely no hope i was like no this is boring this is absolutely boring but episode two came through with the action that i wanted because episode one came through like a drama and i don't have time for a drama Episode two came through with the action, came through with the mission. It came through with everything. And it was exactly what I wanted. There was the right amount of humor that I like in my Marvel stuff. And um, yeah, you know, if I'm going to learn about some characters, if you're going to force feed me the backstory of a character, then make it interesting for me. I don't want to be sitting there like, it's been 40 minutes, what's going on? Tick tock goes the clock. I don't want to be here. Okay. I don't want to be here. So loved it. Super excited for episode two. Like I said, this is a mini series. So we only have four episodes left. And you know, I have the utmost faith that this is going to be amazing. Tell me what you thought about episode two down in the comments. And I will see you next time. And if you would like to know what I'm drinking, I can also put that in the comments as well. All right. So I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching subscribe if you have not if you have made it all this way and you have not subscribed shame on you okay i will see you guys next time bye